Hi guys, Lemmy here. Welcome back to another art video. Today we are doing an art supply review and we are reviewing a set of watercolor crayons. And I decided to do this because when I first started my YouTube I was known for doing Crayola crayon pictures and I thought it would be fun to review a different kind of crayon. Um, these are water soluble so they can act like watercolors when you add water to them. Um, this is by a company that is from Switzerland called Karen Dash. I'm sure I didn't say that correctly. If you guys know the appropriate way to say that, um, please leave it below in the comments because I'd be interested in learning how to say it properly. Um, these are Neo Color 2 Classic Water Soluble Color Wax Pastels. Um, I found these online because they're actually labeled as crayons and not as pastels. They have the same shape as a Crayola crayon, but they are larger. Each crayon is about four inches long, and Crayola, if you want this for a reference, is about three and a half inches, so you get an extra half of an inch with each crayon. They are a little bit thicker perhaps, but they're pretty much the same. They have paper around each crayon so that you have to peel it back and you don't get that sticky stuff on your hands, which I really like. So I'm just going to read what's on the packaging. It comes in a lot of different languages on the back, but it's just pretty, it's pretty short description. It says water soluble color wax pastels suitable for numerous artistic techniques on a wide range of materials. There are 126 colors available individually or in sets. With that being said, the set that I have today is actually a set of 84 colors. It comes in this really nice metal tin and it has two layers that are full of crayons. And it's a really nice presentation. I really love how the crayons are laid out and they include some foam in there to protect each crayon from being destroyed. So we're actually going to get into the part of this review where I show you the different techniques that I've used using these. So there's three different things that I tried. I tried taking a brush with water and putting it against the tip of the crayon to use it like watercolor paint. And something that I noticed is that when you do this technique, you can lay down the paint and you won't have any texture. Um, when you're using crayons and you lay down the crayons as crayons, you get a lot of texture, but if you just take the brush and you put it to the tip, take the paint off and put it on the paper, you don't get any texture. It's a lot like watercoloring. I use this method for coloring the skin of the girl that I'm coloring in this picture. So I didn't want any texture really on the face, so I use that technique for the face. I also try to put the crayon down and then paint with the water on top of it. And when I did that, I mostly did this for the background. So when you're looking at the green in the background popping up, you can really see that the texture stays behind. So you get this nice kind of wash on there, but you also get some of that original texture from the crayon itself. There's another technique that I tried that I kind of just made up and I felt like doing it. And I don't know anyone or I've never seen anyone do this, but I just took the crayon and I put it in the cup of water and then I worked directly on the piece of paper that way. And it turned into what I would describe as a super crayon where you would get like, you were almost painting with the crayon tip. Um, and you would get this like super powered color. Like it was really awesome, right? But as soon as the crayon would run out of the water, it would just turn back into like that regular crayon texture. So you did get a little bit of the crayon texture, but you also got some of the paint on there. And it was really like a very vibrant way of working with these, which I thought was very interesting because, you know, it's just really different and I wanted to try it. So you can get different effects doing different things with these. So you'll see here that there's a left side of this picture and a right side of the picture. 
The left side is completely done using water with these because I wanted to try out the water soluble, um, I guess, description. And then on the right, I use them as pastels or crayons, and I just put them down without any water whatsoever. So you can see the difference between the two and maybe how you would want to use them. So before I get into the crayon side, the crayon only side, I just want to talk about these a bit as watercolors. So they're very, very creamy in nature. Um, you can get like really thick applications of paint. Um, they are translucent. You can add more water, you can see through them, but they are very, very, very creamy. So they are also really reactive. So if you, let's say you put down a layer of, I don't know, let's say purple, and then you want to put down another layer on top of that of black and you don't want them to mix. You have to be really careful because if you put down a lot, like a thick layer of purple, and then you try to put the black on there, what's going to happen is that you will start to lift up the paint that you already put on if you've put down a heavy application. So in this regard, it reminds me of gouache paint where it's highly reactive and you can move it. Um, you can move it around pretty easily once it's on the page and you'll see at a certain point when I'm doing the woman's nose I don't like how it looks so I end up completely just taking the nose out like that's really hard to do with a lot of different art supplies but I just kind of wiped her nose off crazy right but they're really super reactive so when you're using them as watercolors you have to be mindful of that so on to the other section where we're using these just as crayons. Um, I really like them. I think that, I mean, they're pretty much like any other crayon you would use. They do flake less than cheaper crayons like Crayola. So you don't have to worry about those flakes that you constantly have to kind of use your nail to get off your picture. Uh, one thing I did notice is that they're a little bit softer than a Crayola crayon would be. So if you really wanted to get in the nooks and crannies of the paper and cover up all that white of the paper because you don't want the texture, you can definitely do that by pressing harder and making sure you go into the paper. The paper I use is a watercolor paper and it's cold pressed so it's very textured and at certain points in the picture, I try to cover the paper completely. I didn't really want to do that for the whole picture, but I just wanted to try to test that theory out. And I had no problem actually covering up all the white of the paper. So on a very toothy paper that is possible to, to do is get full coverage like that. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that I have this set of 84 and the colors that I have are very, very, very pretty. I really like the different colors that they gave me. Um, I feel like I can do a lot with the colors and for the two pictures that I made side by side, they look completely different with the colors that I used, but I still could have done so many more color combinations and showed off so many more colors, but I didn't have that opportunity because this is a set of 84 crayons and I can't just make like a bunch of pictures until I finally used every crayon, you know, or else I'd be here all day. But they do have really a gorgeous selection of colors. They said that you can buy them individually, which is a plus, so that when you run out of a certain color, you can replace it, which I am really happy that they do. Um, I find that it's really helpful when companies sell sell their pencils or their pastels individually. I mean, you don't want to have to keep buying an entire set because the color that you use the most, that you need the most, you have to replace. You know, it's just financially it wouldn't make sense for the artist, but I'm really happy that they do this because I really actually love this set of crayons. The presentation's really beautiful. The tin is really nice. The crayons are very protected in there and they're really fun to use. I really personally think that if you were to use both the watercolor 
um, side, like an underpainting, if you were to do a picture, and you could do it with both techniques that I went over today with the watercoloring, and then you could add the crayon on top of it to add some textures and stuff, I think that you could create a really beautiful picture. And I'm kind of disappointed I didn't make a third picture um, using both the water and without the water and just like creating one image to show off what they could do together. But I thought it was more beneficial for the point of the review to show um, the two different kinds of, I guess, techniques or effects you can get. But yeah, I think you could make something really awesome using just these crayons. And I'm a fan of mixed media, but I feel like these could be used in mixed media as well. And also they could do really well on their own. So I know that I've done, I put up a video of Teen Titans Go and that was a mixed media piece that I did a few weeks ago. I actually used these crayons to do the background. So if you're working on a darker sheet of paper or any colored sheet of paper, these crayons will show up on that piece of paper and the colors will really pop. So if you're afraid that if you use any other color aside from white, it won't show, that's not the case. These like stick on top of the paper and they really show well. I think that's about all I have to say about these crayons. I think that they're a really good investment and I'm really happy that I did get them and I'm definitely thinking about doing some more crayon pictures in the future and maybe I will I will use these I think because one thing about the Crayola ones is that they're very waxy and they flake a lot. So when I scan them in my scanner, it actually kind of ruins the surface of the glass. And I had to replace my old scanner because I used the Crayola crayons. So a lot of you say, why don't you do crayon work anymore? And that's kind of the reason. Also, Crayola crayons aren't light fast. But with these crayons um, by Karen Dash, which I'm sure I'm saying the name wrong, um, I feel like I could actually, you know, scan my picture, not harm my scanner. Um, I'm not a big fan of actually using um, very waxy or um, pastel sort of things with my scanner, but I feel like this would harm it a lot less than the Crayola crayon. Um, artwork would so I feel I feel safer with these and I really like them so if you're interested in crayons if you're interested in pastels if you're interested in anything that's water soluble I say give it a try they have smaller sets available and you can also buy them individually um, so give them a try see what you guys think and yeah so this review was not sponsored in any way I actually went out and I bought these and yeah, if you guys would like me to review a different kind of art supply, just let me know and I'll try to get my hands on it. So I hope you guys liked the review and I hope that you found it very helpful and I'll talk to you guys in another art video and I'll see you next week. All right, take care. Bye guys.